Now, the fact is, most Democrats on TV, they lately appearing, they only opine about dead children when there are political points to be scored. Remember, last year was the most deadly in a quarter century in Chicago, nearly 800 killed. So where were the protests or the rallies? Where was Beto or Biden? The victims have often been young, rarely acknowledged, and quickly forgotten. In January, eight-year-old Melissa Ortega shot in Chicago by gangbangers' stray bullets. In February, 15-year-old Sincere Cole was shot 24 times just around the block from his home. Earlier this month, a 16-year-old boy was shot and killed near the Bean, a popular tourist attraction. And over Memorial Day weekend, there was sadly the typical carnage in Chicago with 51 shot and nine dead. The most violent weekend since 2017. It's safe to assume that Fox News has writers and researchers, right? But is it weird of me to suspect that there's one, just one, who writes for Laura Ingram and puts down that Chicago has excellent gun laws and their guns actually come from red states. In the state of Illinois, gun violence rate doesn't even crack the top 25 in the country. But she's like, no, when I issue a code black, you bring up Chicago to deflect and distract from poor policy choices of those we blindly support. So my audience votes against their own interests and that's in order. I guess by now, Laura Ingram could freestyle her own racist dog whistles. If there were any political points to be had by Democrats, it would be in the fact that their states have better gun laws than GOP states. Take Hawaii, for example. Hawaiians evidently have a high rate of gun ownership per capita. And according to everytownresearch.org, Hawaii has the second most strict gun laws in America, which is a big reason why their rate of gun violence is the lowest or the best. Hawaii requires permits with a mandatory 14-day waiting period, an age requirement of being 21 to buy a gun, and bans on assault weapons and magazines with more than 10 rounds, just to name a few of their policies. And if you're Laura Ingram's audience, you might say Hawaii's success is because there are few black people there, proving that you can hear her racist dog whistles. We've already talked about proximity, violence, and poverty. Or if you say the state of Hawaii is doing well because it borders no other states, it's an island. No, no, it's not. It's an archipelago. But thank you for showing us why Chicago and Illinois isn't solely to blame for their access to guns either. It's no surprise that five of the top 10 states with the highest gun ownership also have the most gun deaths per capita. It's not a coincidence that most of these states with high homicide rates and gun death rates are in the South or have lax gun laws. I don't want to do this because it will seem like I'm defending Democrats, but Hawaii is a dim lead state. And most of the states that I just mentioned, 14 of the top 15 to be specific, with the highest gun violence rate per 100,000 are GOP led. I'm sure Laura Ingram knew that. I mean, I know that and I'm not a writer or a researcher. I don't have either of those things. I'm just a me. I'm, I'm, I am me. So this begs the question, if her and her writers and researchers know this, then why isn't she saying this? It's, it's because she's a um, lying. I should hire a writer. For Rebel HQ, I'm Jeff Wiggins. My architect knows Japanese. For more from the Young Turks, stay right here. If you want to see content from yours truly, click on the hashtag below. I can also be found on all socials at he gonna be all right. Thanks for watching.